Now let's jump into working with Dreamweaver's CSS layouts. If you go to File, New, and make sure you're on the blank page category on the left, let's create an HTML page. Instead of using a blank page as we've done in the past, let's actually look through this list of CSS layouts. Now the little preview on the right hand side sort of gives you the idea that maybe we're using HTML tables to create something like this. If you've worked on the web before, you're familiar with creating a table that has a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns with a certain number of cells, and those can be given widths of percentage or specific pixel. But in this case, this is actually not involving tables or frames at all, and all of the boxes that you're looking at are set with CSS rules. Let's actually pick one uh, and start to look at it a little bit. Let's look at, um, how about, two column left sidebar header and footer. Perfect. For the moment, I'm going to add the CSS code for this layout to the head of my document. If I wanted to create a new file, an external CSS file for that to go in, I would choose it here, or link to an existing CSS file I may already have. You can also attach CSS files by clicking the link button and browsing for your file, and then clicking create down here. For now, we're going to go to add to our head so that in this document, we can actually look by going into code view at the CSS that came together to make this particular layout work. Let's click on code view and scroll up to the top of the page and notice all of the CSS. Now one thing, this may look really busy and full of stuff in here. What is all this gray text? But these are comments that Adobe has so nicely included to let us know what each of these particular rules is doing to our layout. So it's sort of easy to figure out if you say to yourself something like, oh, I want to, you know, move, I want this box to have a different kind of margin on it, it's pretty easy if you go into code view and sleuth around here just a little bit to figure out exactly what's controlling the margin width of that particular box or that particular style class within the ID of that box. You'll notice this name two column liquid left header. That's a CSS class that Dreamweaver has created to basically represent this entire layout, this entire page. So that if we actually had multiple layouts within the same website, let's say we had, this was our home page, but our sub pages were the three column setup, then in our CSS file, there would be something called three call liquid header footer or something like that. And that would be another class that would be defining a different type of page. So within the pages that are two column liquid left header, the IDs container, header, and h1 in header, sidebar1, h3 in sidebar1, or a p in sidebar1, our main content, our footer, and our footer with a p tag. We have a few other things here that can be used to float elements on the page, on the left or the right, depending on what we want to do. But you can read the comments to figure out what these all do. So the main body tag of the page automatically calls the class two column liquid left header, which if I click on that here, shows me a summary of all the things that that particular CSS rule have going for it. Font 100% Verdana, the background color of the page, my margin, padding, text align center, and the color of the text. If I click all, that's where I get back to the area where I can browse all of my individual rules and make edits to them here. So I recommend that you go into design mode. And also one other thing is there's a visual aids menu right here that you can choose CSS layout backgrounds from, which actually adds all these hideous colors that no one will ever see except you, but it helps you to discern what's actually a div, what's a box that I can edit independently of other things. It's sort of easy to see what the individual elements are currently doing. So this main container which we saw in the code. Right here. The way that this box is created is it's got a width of 80%. It's got a certain background color and a border of one pixel. And all the text inside of it will be aligned to the left. The body element has a text aligned center so that our design actually floats left to right on the page, but we don't want that centering attribute to pass on to our text. So what's been done to prevent that is text align center is on the body tag, 
and then in our two column liquid left header container ID we have text align left which will override the text align center on the body element for the text that's inside of the container.